Sid Badlett and the Rotary Club then formed the, uh, the Boxing Club. And uh, I was, I, I boxed on the first show. We, we began boxing above the, the Hawk and Buckle. And um, it, it, it was a, quite a rough area because part of it, the floor would give way. So, so we had to be pretty careful. And then um, we had the first show and that I, I, I boxed on it, and I think the only other fellow from the early days was Brian Edwards. I was a senior and Brian was a junior. And um, I, I, I think that we both won. I started when, when I was in my auntie's house and my cousin Bob Dudd said, why don't you come down to the boxing club? I says, I didn't even know there was a boxing club in town. He said, yeah, it's uh, under the church institutes. So I went along. Uh, I liked what I saw, and, and since then, it's just it's like a bug to me, like, you know. First started boxing when I was 11. Did it for about two years. I had about three, four contests. Lost them all. So I packed it in. I wasn't... I was too small, wasn't big enough. So I packed it in for about three years. The, tra the trainer at the time when I first started was uh, uh, Mr. Ted Williams, T Teddy Hairpin, like, who worked in the hospital here, you know. And uh, I thought he was spot on, like, you know. Anyway, he was, he was a good trainer, and he was the first trainer, and they put on a show. And then, his wife became ill, and then obviously he had to drop his role as a trainer. And uh, one of the committee, Den Rich, took over. Who Dennis had boxed in the services and was quite genned up on on the training. Like he was pretty good, fair play to him. I came back as a senior. From 16 to 18, I didn't do nothing. I came back as a senior and I took it seriously. Um, and the first 15 months, I think I had 14 contests. I only lost one. You know, um, I, was, I was more or less a man, young man, and I was doing quite well. I had a very fluky knockout win over John Cassidy, who then later went on to be two-time world champion after taking a hell of a hiding for two rounds. And that I then boxed a few more times, but the other lads, Dave Jones, Quinver Williams, and, and um, Brian, obviously, Brian went on to box for Wales, boxed in the championships, boxed very competitively. The likes of myself and Dave, because matched up and down the country like you know on, on against top class lads because the local lads down here you were just sort of a class above them you know not being big headed or nothing like that it's just that's how it works like you know when i was 19 i went to the welsh championships as a lightweight a weight higher than i should have been anyway i got stopped with a broken nose last round so that was finished now then the next year Dennis Rich was my trainer and he said to me you can make the weights lightweight easy with your clothes on so you want to get down to featherweight I was only weighing about nine stone three and the lightweight was nine stone seven you know to start you know what I mean um, so I had to shed three pounds, I had to diet and do a bit of work like that. Just get in at the nine. And from then on, I was pretty good, you know. I got to five finals, only won one. Got stopped twice with cuts, you know. As you get a couple of Welsh vests, the, the matching it's harder for the, the matchmaker because you've got to go far afield to box 
top class lads, like, you know, some over the top, really, but, uh, you know, he's a take a chance. Box to the town hall in Denby twice. Yeah. I, I had about 80 contests in all. I know in the box twice in Denby. Yeah. In all that time. Yeah. Most of boxing was um, around the Liverpool area. You know, Liverpool, Bolton, places like that, you know. Yeah. Boxing real, obviously, mm. places like that. Clandidno, um, Grand Hotel, Dinner Jacket Do's. I used to enjoy them. Yeah. They were really good. I carried on on boxing, but I, I never went in for the championships. Championships are very tough things to go in for, and I just didn't think I, I was good enough, even though I'd actually beaten um, one or two of the champions. And so I then went and worked in London, although I still trained up here. And down in London, which was a bit of a jungle there, and I boxed lots of people down there, went on to be champions and things. I, I even boxed a reigning ABA, a junior ABA champion of, of Great Britain and gave away 10 pounds to him. But that I, I wasn't much more involved with, the, with, with, with boxing up, up here. Although every time I came home, I, I, was, I trained with the club. And I won my Welsh title, 1972. Then I was in the final again, 73. And I got the final again, 77. And I, that was my last final out of boxing. Um, I boxed for Wales, my first international against Spain when I was 20. Um, I won that one, stopped the guy. And then I went on to box 12 times for Wales. I won eight against Spain, Denmark, Sweden, Ireland, teams like that. Um, and I captained Wales eight, nine times out of them, you know. Myself and, and Dave Jones, we, we helped spar with uh, Dave Davis up in Bangor when he, he was going for uh, Commonwealth Games and he won uh, a silver medal there. And, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's gone quite well, really, like, you know, been very lucky. Boxing really good top lads and uh, won a few, but lost a few as well, like, you know. Yeah, you win some, you lose some, like, you know, you, you, you can't pick and choose. I boxed, um, I got to ABA semi-finals in 1972, and I lost at a split decision to Kirkland Lang, who went on to be British, European champion. He didn't win the world title, but he was very, very good, very, very good. And he actually beat the great Roberto Duran in a non-title contest. Beat him on points. It's good. I boxed a few. Um, Joey Singleton, British champion, boxed for the European title as professionals. I'm going on about now, you know. Um, yes, I boxed some very, very good, very tasty lads. Yeah. Uh, I was approached to turn pro, which I did. I turned pro, I got, I got accepted, but didn't box as a pro. I got reinstated back to St. and then boxed for Wales three times after being reinstated. Like, uh, he was uh, ex-professional, uh, Gus Harris. I don't know if you know him, he had the stall on town, proper cockney. Like geezer, but you know, wrist geezer, you know, all that. Yeah, he's uh, get you, man, we'll, we'll box a little for me, we get you back in the overnight train, you know, 60 quid. But, you know, which was quite a bit of cash then, like, had to just be married. And um, anyway, having a good rollicking off uh, Denrich. Not informing them first, it was in the papers. I, uh, 
Well, Sarah phoned uh, Gus Harris up and Gus, I won't, I can't say the words he said like, but uh, anyway, I got reinstated back as an amateur, like, obviously, because I hadn't boxed as a pro, like, and uh, it just took me from there. I had a few more vests, Welsh vests. So I boxed for Wales, my first international against Spain when I was 20. Um, I won that one, stopped the guy, and then I went on to box 12 times for Wales. I won eight against Spain, Denmark, Sweden, Ireland, teams like that. Um, and I captained Wales eight, nine times out of them, you know. Um, Johnny Owen. Oh, yeah, Johnny Owen. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant lad. And with me and Dave, and Johnny and Bryn, Bryn Griffiths, the, the Cardiff lads were like two different set teams, like they? Yeah, the lads. Neither. It's, uh, yeah, enjoyed the time, right? But uh, in the end, enough was enough and <laughs> called it a day, like. And I boxed down till I was 30. I had my last contest when I was 30. And for a featherweight, that was old. You know, you were over the hill, you know. Uh, and I just ran out of steam. No, I said, that, that's it, back in the you know. Now there are not many boxers around. There's, there's very few around, but in the old days there was a hell of a lot of boxers. The competition was very high. And you, you, you would go to a show and you, you could get contests with no trouble at all. You were prepared to, to give away weight. You could get contests. What did it do for, for Denby? I should say it, well, because of Dennis Richards, who became a very um, pivotal trainer there, it became a place where a lot of people wanted to get involved. And I'd say the heyday of Denby was when you had the four, the four boxers who were going in for the World Championships and, and um, representing Wales and North Wales and things. That was at Brian Edwards, Dave Jones, Quinver Williams, and um, Seth, Seth Davis. Seth Davis, who was a Welsh, Welsh champion as well. And then Denby Boxing has carried on. Um, it's the whole of the, the amateur boxing world has changed and there's much less boxers than has become the, uh, the semi-professional boxers, which these, these belts come from them. But they're no more than novices, really. Uh, and, and they didn't really ever, you know, I, I, I mean that you can win one of these belts after about three fights. Um, and it's uh, a very a different sport now. Thank you.